I'm just feeling myself today. Don't mind me. Hi everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to this crazy corner of the internet where sometimes we abandon series for like a long period of time and then we revisit them just in the nick of time. We are back from a long overdue break on how to be a furry YouTuber. So I have a couple things I want to talk to you guys about for the end of the year first and then we'll dive into the subject matter of today. What? All of the e-card commissions are completed and delivered to their respective requesters. So if you commissioned an e-card for me, check your telegram. You should have received it there, and I hope you enjoy them. There's been a ton of you that have responded already, so thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed them. This was so much fun to do. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was just to let you know what videos to expect for the rest of the year. My schedule has lightened up a little bit, so I have some exciting videos plan for you in the next two to three weeks or so. One of them is I will be doing a bloopers video. I love bloopers, oh my God. So that's gonna be really fun. I also wanna make a highlights video, which I don't exactly know what that's going to entail yet, but I wanna do something with music. So keep an eye out, that should be exciting. Ah! I am also going to be doing a bloopers video on the Quad Suits channel. And of course there will be this video posted today because we like to talk about YouTube. <laughs> okay, so since it's been a while on this series, I just wanna do a quick recap on what we've talked about in the past. So in episode two, we talked about how to build a persona, a character, an alter ego, if you will. And in episode three, we talked about the various techniques that people use commonly or other techniques you can use to build a YouTube channel, your presence on the internet, and so on. So far, we've talked about generic strategies you can use just to kind of get your paws wet with furry YouTube. But moving forward in this series, we're gonna be talking about much more specific strategies that you can use to bring your content to the next level. Wow, dimensions. Oh. So what I'm talking about today is gonna to be divided into two categories. Uh, the first is brainstorming part two. I had talked about brainstorming in episode three a little bit, but I'm gonna kind of wrap up what I wanna say about brainstorming. And the second thing we'll dive into is scripting. So how to write a script, what my technique is when I script, etc. So when we talk about brainstorming, we're talking about different processes that people use to create ideas for their next video, for a series of videos, music videos, skits. The way that I'm approaching this today, the focus is going to be growing a channel and building your presence online, but there are certainly plenty of techniques not discussed here that you can certainly use to be creative. The more YouTube you watch, the more you'll get an understanding of the kinds of videos that people like to watch. Right now, there are three types of videos that I see are really popular on YouTube. One of them is the Q&A, the question and answer video. Two huge benefits with a Q&A, Obviously, it is a chance for your audience to interact with you. As somebody who is an entertainer online, this makes you seem like you're not just sitting on cloud nine or an island somewhere. It makes you seem like a person because people are interacting with you. They can reach you. You know, you're reachable. You get an opportunity to hear what your audience might want to watch or the kinds of things they're interested in, and you can respond to those and give the people what they want. Wow! Remember, the focus is to connect with your audience and make them feel involved in your artistic craft. That connection creates trust, and giving your audience a voice helps to add fun to the entire process, which is super great. Another super popular type of video or genre of YouTube is, of course, our gaming videos. This is an overly saturated market and it pretty much has been for the entire life of YouTube, but your ability to stand out does pretty much depend on what niche of gaming you're interested in exploring. So for example, the angry video game nerd plays a lot of older games. PewDiePie started off with the horror genre of games before he became popular. There are people who live stream games. As saturated as the market is, there is somebody who is interested in every type of game out there, so you'll always find an audience. Another super type of popular video is of course any traveling videos, uh, vacations, vlogs, conventions. If you're going somewhere and the place is really well known and you're wearing a fursuit, that is 99% of the time always going to garner views, likes, comments, shares, etc. You will typically get a large amount of traffic on that video. So naturally going to a place that's pretty well known could be expensive. I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing that for every one of your videos, <laughs> but something simple like going out to dinner 
and having a fun time and joking around, that can also perform really well. Vlogs are typically meant to be personal. It can create a way for your audience to feel closer to you and connected to your interests. But again, it just depends on what you want to show and what you're trying to have fun with personally. Those are just three types of videos I've seen become super popular since I've been doing YouTube, but there are tons more. So in your efforts to watch YouTube and kind of get an understanding of what people want to see, there's a lot of different ways to kind of handle that data, but you can always make a list and look at that list periodically. That could help you get ideas for your next video or what your audience wants to see next. Also, keep in mind that even if the type of video you're watching isn't necessarily what your audience wants to see, you may see concepts or ideas presented or used in these videos that can always help you boost your content and make it more appealing to your audience. So with the brainstorming ideas that I've talked about so far, a lot of this has to do with getting really familiar with YouTube, so watching videos, watching people. Keeping an eye on that stuff can help you get an idea for what is working and what is not working for other content creators out there. And also, as you produce videos, you can get a sense of what is or isn't working for your channel. At this point, since I've been making videos for about six, almost seven years now, there are basically only two strategies that I use for true independent brainstorming. There was a book that I read a long time ago that introduced the idea of something called Christopher Columbus idea. Ideas. So as you might remember, Christopher Columbus was an Italian seafaring explorer who was looking for a direct route from Europe to Asia in 1492. In his efforts to do that, he instead landed in what we now know as the Americas. So something we can learn from Christopher Columbus is you might have a specific idea of what the end result looks like, and you may end up somewhere completely different during that journey. And that's totally okay. This whole process is how we discover new concepts and ideas, so you have to try to remain open to those possibilities as much as you can. Probably my favorite brainstorming technique is just random word association because I've pretty much loved randomness since I've been a very, very tiny foxo. <laughs> random word association pretty much works like this. Start by thinking of a word in your mind. You can always draw from your immediate surroundings, but the first word that you pick should be something that's fairly inaccessible to you. If I'm sitting in a coffee shop, maybe I'm gonna think of like a hot air balloon or tech support or a camel. Then I'm gonna try to think of another word, and this time I will pick from something in my environment. So if I'm in a coffee shop, maybe I think of the word barista, or cup, or credit card. Now what I'm gonna do is try to examine how these two things might be related to each other. So a really easy way to do that is just to ask those famous six questions, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Why is a barista flying on a hot air balloon? Where are they going? Who convinced them to fly in the first place? When will they stop brewing coffee for the tech support camel that made a credit card out of recycled cups? Obviously, this is a really silly example, but you're gonna run into about 100 dead ends with this process, and you might not make a video on every single dead end or new concept that you find, but the more you do this, the more you'll break down these sort of mental barriers in your head about things that might not be related to each other. And as you break down some of those walls, that can open your mind to new possibilities and really exciting ideas for your content. Okay, so that's the extent of what I want to talk about with brainstorming. Now we're going to dive into scripting. Scripting is a very, very handy method for putting ideas down to paper, especially when you sort of need to have a little more control over your filming process. Especially when you're a newer content creator, I really do recommend keeping some kind of note file somewhere close to you as you're filming. When I was new to making videos, I used to keep Notepad open on a laptop and just have like text notes that I could refer to. Nowadays, what I like to do is just print off my script and set it out of frame between takes. Here's my script. <laughs> this is particularly useful for like a Q&A video because you can easily keep your questions somewhere handy. But if you decide you're gonna move into filming sketches or skits, having a script is almost a requirement, if not super critical for that process. So when you write a script, your goal is not to write a Bible and it's not to write an exact transcript of how your video is gonna turn out. You really want it to be more like a resource guide. If you can allow your filming process to experience lines that are off the script or events that are off the script, it can actually make your video feel more natural. Our writing voices can be really different from our speaking voices, so that's why that's important. Also, if you're new to scripting or filming, or even if you have experience, keep in mind that when you're visualizing that video in your head to get it on paper when you're scripting, there are going to be some shots or some sequences that just aren't possible when you actually go to film, and you may not figure it out until that point, so be adaptable, because you're going to just 
run into some difficulties sometimes, and that's totally okay. That's part of the process. <laughs> the first step to scripting is up here. You have to be able to see the video in your head. You might want to just watch it in your head a few times just to make sure that you know what you want the end result to be. Now that you have your mental picture, as you're working through that video in your mind, start to take notes about what your video looks like. These notes don't have to be super organized yet, but you want to write down enough so that when you refer to the notes later, you can easily recreate that movie inside of your mind. If you're working on a skit or a sketch, this is where you want to start writing down dialogue as well. Okay, so once you have these notes written down, now you want to start organizing your notes into a list of shots. As you're watching that video in your head, Pay attention to where your camera angle is changing or where you're shifting to a different camera. That's probably where your jump cuts are gonna be. So use those jump cuts as breakpoints to identify your individual shots. As you're breaking out your shots and creating that list, spend this time tweaking your dialogue, changing plot details, reordering shots. That way, you're spending as much time as possible crafting this art into exactly what you want it to be. Work, rework, and rework. The longer you can spend doing this, the better your video will be. Okay, so now at this stage, you want to work through your list of shots and determine where the camera is going to be in each of your shots. If you have other equipment, such as additional cameras, lighting, sound, you can also at this stage figure out what equipment you're going to be using. So perhaps you have a GoPro on a tripod or a monopod, you might have a DSLR on a tripod or a monopod, you might be using soft lighting, you might be in focus or out of focus. As you're working through these setups, you want to create a list somewhere on your script, sort of like a key that you can use to identify each setup that you'll be using. This is just a part of the script that I wrote for our Furry Love music video that I did earlier this year, and it's just basically a color-coded key that identifies which camera that I'll be using in the shots. I color code because I'm super OCD, <laughs> but honestly, for me, it does make it so much easier to read the script as you're going through your shots. Once you have your key or legend of different camera setups that you'll be using, label each of your shots in such a way that you can quickly identify which setup you'll be using. And at this point, review your script thoroughly and repeatedly, again and again and again. <laughs> you're not writing down a Bible. This is not you know, you're writing down the breath every person is going to take at a specific moment in time. You're just wanting to make sure that you're in love with this script and it captures as much of the essence of your video as possible. That's pretty much building the script. And again, that's my process. There's a hundred different ways you could do this. Either way, you ultimately want to go with a process that works for you. Once you're satisfied with your script, you really want to keep it somewhere on hand that's easy to get to while you're filming. When you are filming from a script, my personal favorite technique is to just set up one camera setup, do all the shots there, go to your next setup, do all the shots there, go to your third setup, do all your shots there, etc. That way you're only setting up and tearing down each setup one time instead of repeatedly. That will save you a lot of time in suit, perhaps time that you're spending under studio lighting, which can be super hot. <laughs> if you're working with anybody who is helping you set up and tear down, this makes their job a little bit easier too. For me, I have not had a project yet where it's been feasible to shoot all of my shots directly chronologically. I very much have had to go to, here's my setup A, here's setup B, here's setup C, do all my shots there. And then when I go to edit the video, I just rearrange all my shots in the order where they need to go. Editing is true magic, so. It, it's fun. <laughs> and that's pretty much all I want to say about scripting. Scripting is magical. It can give your video process a ton of structure. It can easily help you capture ideas that you thought of at 3 a.m. and you don't want to forget by 7 p.m. the next day. <laughs> Especially when you go to film an exciting project. You know? Wow, that was episode four of How to Be a Furry YouTuber. Oh my god! You know, so many more of you have joined this channel since I did my last episode. So if you're new and you enjoyed this, please feel free to check out my older episodes and let me know if there's something you want to see in a future episode on this series. As usual, if there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to make it happen. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in a future episode where we eat chicken pot pies with a ton, a ton, a ton of cheese. Bye!